Richie, another win on Saturday. The unbeaten run continues. Um, what stood out for you from the victory over Bolton? Um, well, firstly, in terms of beating a team in the top six, which I don't think we've done, well, certainly we haven't done recently. I know we did Barnsley in the FA Cup, but we, we spoke to him beforehand and saying about the, the Portsmouth game, the Sheffield Wednesday game, the Bolton game over Christmas, how we'd competed, but just didn't really have that final final bit of quality. So, um, so obviously winning the game against a, a rival, um, the, the little bit of quality, some of the stuff we'd worked on in training, but really importantly was the, the physical data again that came back really high. So the work ethic, the pressing, and in fairness to Bolton, they're a real high pressing team themselves. They're probably one of the best pressing teams in the league and you know we more than matched them. So that's certainly something that's improving. This question applies to the fitness data specifically, but, but generally, are you surprised with how quickly you've made progress with the group? Um, <clears throat> from the physical side, I am. Yeah, because often it takes a right good pre-season to get, to get them to play that way. And um, we obviously didn't have that. And we also had a spell, I think it was six Tuesdays in a row or six midweek games, where we very rarely trained. However, the times when we did train was training hard. So, um, so a lot of it is about getting the message over, but you know, obviously a big part of it is getting over the physical side of it to be able to, to do it repeatedly. So you know, the data is going up on a weekly basis, which is really positive. But um, from the physical side, I am probably a little bit surprised. From the technical and tactical side, probably not really, because you know, we've, we talk about it every day and obviously we've got some really talented players. We spoke to you a few weeks ago and, and we were talking about the unbeaten run at that time and, and the fact there were a lot of draws in there. You seem to have tipped that balance now. I mean, you have tipped that balance with, with five consecutive wins. How, how have you done that? What's made the difference? How have you converted draws into wins recently? Yeah, I think we remember, remember talking about how were we going to do that. And I think one of the things we talked about was um, the bench getting stronger. So substitutions, enabling us to make changes like for like over 60, 65, 70 minutes. Um, I mean, you look at the, the subs at the weekend to bring on James Collins, um, and obviously Tony for his debut, Dobbs, Tomo for the last five or ten minutes that gives us legs and physicality to get round the pitch. So, um, so certainly in terms of having a fully fit squad almost, and obviously the two, the two boys who played a big part over the last few weeks were missing. But um, again, just more about the information in the final third, you know, creating better chances. Um, obviously we were, we were keeping clean sheets up till a couple of weeks ago, but... Um, we, we are definitely creating better chances through some of the stuff we've worked on in training. You did have to make changes in the defence on, on Saturday and the, and the success has been built on your defensive record. Not a reflection on the players that came in because they're both more than capable, but whenever you have to change your defence and, and disrupt that part of the pitch, are you ever a little concerned about that? Yeah, a little bit, because I think it's one of the things that, um, like even if you look at really successful teams at the top level over the last few years, it's normally predominantly, look, you know, you can rotate the strikers, rotate, rotate the midfielders, rotate the wide players, but the back four, you know, you look at, say, for example, Liverpool, Van Dijk playing nearly every week when he was fit, or, um, you know, Man City now, Stones plays every week, but they rotate people around him. So, um, and sometimes you just get comf comfortable and confident with the person alongside you. So, to take two of them out, and that, again, that is, you know, Aiden was more than capable before he got injured, so was Curtis. But you know the back four certainly had been working pretty well together. So um, sometimes when you take one out of a back four, it can be difficult. But to take two and they were both on the same side, then it means Fozzie moving across one, which he's not been used to recently. So um, yeah, it could have quite easily been you know very difficult. But again, we work in training constantly about you don't always work in the back four. So it might be that over the last few weeks we've done some work where. You know, Hayden's played in that particular back four or Cash has played alongside Steers or whatever it is. So we, we do make a conscious effort that they don't just work in that back four and they get used to working with other people. Uh, just while we're on the subject, any update on, on Louis Sibley or, or Aaron Cashin? Uh, they're both coming on OK. They've both done bits today, but um, in terms of uh, how soon they will be available, um, we'll, you know, we'll obviously in terms of Cash, he'll, we'll probably get more information in the morning. Um, Sibs probably we're still waiting for a scan result really. Everyone else okay, same squad as the weekend? Yeah, everybody seems fine. Yeah, there was a bit of bit of stiffness this morning, but apart from that, everybody's fine.
Um, and, and just a word on, on Joseph Anang, who's been recalled by West Ham, and, and will you look to replace him, or are you not maybe that far down the line? Um, yeah, possibly. Um, obviously, from his point of view, you know, the really unfortunate injury when he first came in, um, and obviously the success of Joe um, over the last um, two or three months has meant that obviously his, his chances have been really limited. So he wants to play and I think from what I can gather he's sort of been called back to be part of West Ham's squad. So uh, we'll probably see him next week obviously at the game. So, um, but um, no, really good lad, um, done great, but obviously, you know, circumstances led to the fact that chances were limited. Um, so yeah, we'll be having a chat with Andy and finding out how he wants to do his little section. Looking ahead, um, Nathaniel Mendes Lang used a brilliant line post game on, on Saturday and he talked about being confident but not arrogant, looking at matches to come. How do you make sure that the guys don't tip over and, and start to take it easy? Yeah, that, that's something we've talked about when we've been on previous runs before. Complacency and confidence is a very fine line. So, um, yeah, reminding them constantly about what's got them where they are, but also reminding them how simple it can be and how important small details are. So, you know, we talk a lot about everything matters. You know, we, we had the game against Barnsley a couple of weeks ago. We could have quite easily been 2-0 down after 10 minutes. So sometimes you have to remind them of those sort of things. Oh, look, we didn't defend the set piece very well. Obviously, it was a good save from Joe. So, you know, we could have easily been a goal down. So everything matters. So um, letting them know how good they can be, but also letting them know that how fine a line it is between, look, if you don't do the right things and, you know, the lads have been relatively successful over the last few weeks because everything has mattered and they have pressed when they needed to and they have chased down lost causes. You suddenly stop doing that and you're taking away an important part of the building process. So, um, reminding of the simple basics really, but how easy, without being negative, how easily it can all fall down again. At Port Vale on, on Tuesday, they, they spoiled your first home game all the way back in October, which feels like a long, long time ago, doesn't it? Yeah, the sun was out and it was warm, <laughs> so. Um, what do you expect from them? Same sort of challenge? Yeah, very much so. And um, I know Daryl Clark very well. He's an excellent manager in terms of managing people. And um, he, get, he gets them working extremely hard. Um, and it, without being disrespectful, they're probably greater than the sum of their parts. You know, a newly promoted team who I'm sure one or two people expected to be in the bottom half. But he's been touching in and around the edge of uh, the playoffs for, for quite a while now. And, and obviously, going back to the game, like you just mentioned, um, like I appreciate the fact we had a man sent off and all that sort of stuff, but it wasn't an easy game. So, um, so extremely hard working, very well organised. Andy Crosby is a very good coach. He was his assistant. Um, so they're, they're very organised. Everybody knows their role and responsibility. And, um, aggressive, aggressive on set pieces. They've got really good stats on attacking and defending set pieces. So they'll be very organised with them. So that's something obviously we have to be aware of. Um, and just a difficult place and again a relatively local derby so um, I'm sure you know a good crowd from our point of view but um, obviously Port Vale wanting to beat Derby. It's been a while since, since Derby went there and the thing that people always talk about is, is the Vale Park pitch. Is it, does it feel as big as everyone yeah. says when you're out there? Yeah it does and I remember playing there for Hartlepool about I don't know 15 years ago whatever it was and it was I think it was like the third game of the season it must have been 100 degrees playing up front on my own, thinking, wow, this is like playing on a polo pitch or whatever it is, you know, it's absolutely humongous. So yeah, it is big. And then it's, it's made to be feel even bigger, obviously, due to the size of the gap. You know, that can be a bit of a, um, you know, a, a visual sort of impact in terms of the, the distance between the pitch and the, and, the, and the stadium. So it's made to feel even bigger, you know, with the run, runoffs across the, uh, along the side of it. So yeah, it is a pretty big pitch and um, obviously the lad's gonna have to work even harder.